This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, that means you're basically like a VIP member and you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get Or exclusive merch. Exclusive merch. You could get um first dibs on signing up for a live show you get episodes with no commercials you get our video because our video is no longer available on youtube it is only on patreon and the most important to me is you get videos of our live shows but also bonus episodes each month but if you're on a Patreon, you're VIP, you're going to get more. Because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. <laughs> this is also going to be the exclusive place that Dirty Chat is going to go to. In order to hear the full content, it's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Showed in. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour true crime podcast. It is that. Oh my gosh. What is today? Today's Tuesday. And where did you go? I went to Austin. For what? Did you go to Kendra Scott or the Domain or oh. Sixth Street? No, I didn't know. No? no? Mm-mm. What, Mm-mm. what for? Uh, there was a murder trial. <laughs> I basically went on the first vacation of the year. <laughs> And it was fabulous. Was it amazing? It was uh, everything you thought. Everything. And you only went like a day and a half. I went still for great. the day. I went for probably besides the verdict day, I went the best day. The best day. Yes. So tell them what trial, but then don't tell them too much because. Caitlin Armstrong. She's the one in uh, The Cyclist, The Murder of Mo Wilson. She's the one who's the suspect. Yeah. Um, and it was happening in Austin because it all happened in Austin. So the trial was in Austin and it was delayed a few times. And then they finally started a few weeks ago. They um, were airing um, live streaming opening statements, closing statements, and verdict. But they had some people who were live tweeting. So that's a way that I was able to keep up with it as it was going on. And then I got word that they might have uh, closing statements on uh, whatever day I went. Uh, Before Monday the... F- went. What is today? Like today's oh. actually Thursday. So Wednesday the 15th you went. Yes. And they were thinking that the defense would kind of be pretty quick. Um, and they would have been very quick, except for they had this freaking... Um, four hour long expert witness oh and i don't know why they do that because it's the jury i was watching the jury and they are nodding off heads leaning over falling asleep like you're it's too much it's like so scientific and this people it's like yeah i don't i don't I, i just don't understand why they have to do all that anyway Besides that, it was very, it was intense. It was um, this whole point where she got up and she went and was going to tell them if she was going to testify or not, where Caitlin did. Mm -hmm. And that was like the first movement she's made. And like the courtroom was like still and quiet and everybody was standing up, which is, well, I guess it was the jury was out of the room and she had walked up there with her attorneys and they were all discussing it. Um, But it was a very, according to the news outlets, they said this was like the, um, the highest point of the trial, or it was just like mm. the most intense point of the trial up until obviously. And so you sat behind the family, the victim's oh. family. So I get family. there and I'm like, so I was really early because I, I 
barely slept. And I get there, and um, one of the first people in the actual courtroom, and I don't know where to go. I'm like, okay, where's the best? Was where it can full? I- Not yesterday. Okay. It was, the afternoon was a little bit, pr- it was pretty full, but it could, there was space. Um, but I get there, I'm like, okay, I want to be able to see the jury. I want to be able to see her and the witness. So I go on, which would have been the family's, the victim side, and um, I don't, they have like this front area where it's for the family, and I was like, okay, well, that's where they all sit. I just sat on the one behind it. Well, I did I did not know that it was going to be like her aunts and uncles and a whole granola family there, and I'm sitting there, and this lady comes, and she's like, She's walking towards me, and I was like, oh, I'll scoot over, like, towards the wall. And she was like, no, I sit there. And I was like, oh, oh, mm. oh, no. And I was like, <laughs> I'm awkward as hell. And so I'm like, oh, my God, this is the family. This is the family. This is the family. This is the family. <laughs> and I get up, and I scoot back one row next to the guy who has been live-tweeting, News Nation guy, Alex. Ooh. And I, I don't even know if I spoke words, but I looked at him, and I said something. And he was like, he looked at me confused, and I was like, I I don't know what happened. I had think I had a stroke. (laughs) And then some other lady comes and sits and she tells me to put my phone up. And I was like, who are you? I'm only putting my phone up if it's like the bailiff telling me. And so anyways, there's a whole thing. Then afterwards I go in the afternoon, I sit on the other side, further to the back. And um, I had multiple people ask me, three different people on three different occasions, just in that one day, ask if I was... If I had been there before, because I looked familiar, then they asked if I was on, if I was like a news person, they, they thought they had seen me on the news and not like in a bad way, not like escaping. Uh, and then one lady asked me if I was a lawyer. <laughs> I was like, Did you have them real close? Yeah. Okay. And I guess. And your glasses and you looked official. I did. I did. I did. I looked weird. I had like, I did. 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 So, and I, I could answer a couple. So whenever Caitlin went up there, talked to the judge and stuff and everybody was like quiet and freaking out. It's the lady next to me, Camille. Oh, shout out to Camille, the realtor from Austin. If you're listening, cause okay. she said she was really into true crime and she was, um, and I said, well, I do true crime podcast. So you should go follow us and she looked it up on facebook and she followed us yes anyway so um i was kind of explaining to her what the process was if what was happening she has to caitlin would have to verbally say that she does not want to te- does or does not want to testify and if she is not under the impression of, or like not being forced to or not to by her lawyers and blah 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 so then that's when she asked if I was a lawyer. And I was like, no, ma'am, <laughs> no, yep. no, 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 yep, thanks, yep, yep. but no. Nice. So you're going to cover the full episode I'm going to do, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. So we know the verdict now, though. Are you going to drop the bomb or are you going to wait till Thursday? Um, they know it. It's all over the social media. Okay. Well, she is. she did get guilty, mm-hmm. but you'll find out the sentencing on Thursday. You'll find gotcha. out how long the sentencing is. Oh, they already did that too? That's what they're doing right now as we speak. Okay. All righty. So I got some more news for you. And a little bit is I just saw that Carrie Rawson, uh-huh. BTK's, BTK's daughter, daughter, has resigned from the BTK National Task Force, effective like a couple hours ago. Um. So remember that ta- remember we talked about a couple quickies ago mm-hmm. is that there was these cold case murders in Oklahoma that they were trying to tie BTK to yeah right and <clears throat> so they had this whole task force which they had one back in the day is this the task force with the weird name like the hot dog task force was that them I can't remember uh, I th- or was that Ted Bundy. No, I, th- you're. I think you're onto something. I feel like it was, BTK, and it was like hot, hot dog. I know. I, it sounds work. familiar. I'll Anyways, um, so they're currently investigating some of those cold cases, and this task force has like thirty people on it, and including Kansas. So Wichita, Kansas, was where BTK was from. So their Department of Corrections and a bunch of retired law enforcement, entire retired investigators. Now the OS- OSBI is OBSI. Oh, SBI? Oklahoma State Bureau 
of investigation. So OSBI. OSBI. Oh, yeah. um, OSBI. And then Carrie Rawson was on it. So she has, dec- like, she resigned. People couldn't get along. And there's some drama with the task force and the OS in the Oklahoma State, like, county and the district attorney there now. Like, there's a whole bunch of drama going on. And there was, like, two different press conferences. And one of them was task force guy and then the DA got to come back and like refute and basically they're threatening each other to take each they're trying to get the DA um, impeached can you impeach a DA <laughs> this <laughs> sounds like these the stuff, impeachable crimes it sounds like the stuff that's happening up in New York with the Long Island serial killer yeah. it sounds like that kind of stuff and maybe they're unraveling some things. So there's that. She's not no longer part of the task force, but she will still be a witness if needed, if they find something that's connecting him to some of these. So there we go, BTK. Next up, this is an old story mm-hmm. that is back in the news because so at the beginning of 2023, <clears throat> we talked about a Virginia teacher who was shot by her six-year-old student, he brought his handgun, his ni- a nine millimeter to school, shot the mm-hmm. teacher, like got all the kids out, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but put her hand up and he shot her and it shot like through her hand or whatever. Yeah. Teacher didn't die. Six year old, right? Yes. And we had that. a, we talked about like. If it was the parents yeah. and the locking up the gun and yes, all that. Yes. And yeah. like when you have a gun and you have, period, you take the responsibility for that gun. Well, they um, searched the house afterwards and they found not only um, like the gun wasn't in a safe spot, but they found narcotics, packaging, paraphernalia, 24.5 grams of marijuana, edibles, and a bunch of ammunition. The mother of the student is Deja Taylor. She's 26 years old. Now... So they, of course, brought charges against her Mm -hmm. because it was ultimately her fault. Her attorney asked for her to be sentenced to three years probation, home confinement, and counseling to deal with why she was making bad decisions, I guess. Um, But she was actually sentenced to 21 months in jail for each of the charge. And I think there's like a drug charge, there's a child neglect charge, and then like the gun Interesting. Charged. And they're to be served concurrently. So that's at the same time, right? Oh, yeah. Together. So it, she'll get at least 21 months. Um, the mother, Taylor, Deja Taylor, did say that she is um, really dealing with a lot of guilt from it. It's not anything she ever would have wanted to happen or meant to happen. She understands she was a dumbass. Now, a word from our sponsors. But the teacher who had to endure five surgeries after this, regular intensive therapy to restore motion back in her hand, but is also dealing with a lot of deep psychological scars that, quote, plague her during most of the waking moments and invade her dreams. So she filed a $40 million lawsuit (laughs) against the school for negligence. (gasps) Get it. Yeah. I mean, well, you're not going to go after the mama. She's, what does she have? Yeah. And so what's the point of suing these people that really, yeah. Do you ever get your money? No. You can't squeeze, what does it say? I don't know. Something from a turnip. You can't squeeze, squeeze juice, the out, of juice out of the pineapple tree. <laughs> um, so, but this is why it's the school's fault because the assistant principal of the school was warned multiple times that day yes. that the child was violent, behaving violently, threatening, and reportedly, allegedly had a gun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How do you? I don't know. Ignore that. Unless that was the least, I would like to know what type of school district. Like, is this a low SES? Is this does this school district Excuse have me? a ton of behav- low socioeconomic mm. s- school? Um, like, so does this school have a lot of behaviors? And so maybe that threat wasn't at the top of his or I would, a, the I list. would feel like 
a gun should be at the top. What I would is it like that it hard to get the students? bag and, and bag look up. at it it takes what five seconds to do that and i'm pretty sh- well and this is where was this virginia but i know like in texas now most of our schools have you walk in there's clear bas- backpack rules all the games now clear bag rules you go to even like football high school football games now there's clear bag policies um and you're walking through metal detectors mm-hmm. like going through so that could also be part of the lawsuit is we should have the school district should have been more preventative i guess we should have had clear backpacks we should have had metal detectors we should have done all yeah. the things well good for that lady yeah. so they tried the school district tried to have it thrown out and it was not thrown out so she's going to be able to go all the way with this for she's not been able to work i mean and i oh. guess when you have a lawsuit like this like you really have to if you're saying pain and suffering, like you really have to show that you're pain and suffering. Yeah. Or I mean, like it's... for the Maya trial, they're going to say, oh, well, she was at a, I don't know, concert two weeks ago. She's not oh. too sad. She's at a prom. You yeah. Know, like they did Maya. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Next one. I'm just going to pick on teachers today. This is a, te- a Friends with Benefits episode or story. What? Um, which? I'm going to silent. Um. What, last week, what what was that kid's name who has, who we thought was autistic and they had to get rid of the other kids? I don't remember, but you sent it to me. Oh, okay, because the one who beat the crap out of his teacher. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's something going on with that one, but I think it's well. So that was damn it. Where was that? Um, do that one and I'm, let me look. Basically, the teacher saying she wants ma- that teacher that was beat up was saying she wants maximum punishment. Yeah, from him. yeah. Like she don't want them to go easy on him. So that's really what it was. There hasn't okay. been any sentencing, but that teacher said that she forget the el- forget the eligibility or forget the diagnosis, maximum punishment. If okay, possible. yeah. She's saying the same thing. Like so that yeah, that she reminded hasn't me been of able to yeah yeah um live a normal life. She's been in pain. She's having yes. some anxiety and and i saw that video oh that was bad who are these who are these teachers who walk up on it first and they just stand there and they're like oh i would like tackle the kid <laughs> yeah i mean that's a that res- restraining a kid is hard in school but that's a reason to restrain imminent serious harm to i mean he was just others. like punching at her just like going at her yeah I don't know. I always say that I would love to just be the one to be like. You would have not have. I feel like them. I might have. I feel like I really would have wanted to. <laughs> wanted to and doing is two different things. It just it just depends on what takes but over. But with multiple teachers, like they could have mo- well, like then, grabbed one arm and another arm. Well, then arm. the multiple started coming out and they started pulling them off and then he starts kicking her and then. They any they it's like ten teachers finally like are able to get him off and she's just like sprawled out oh, like man. and the fact that that video went viral like she has a lot to <laughs> yeah a lot to be pissed at um okay so and now this Connecticut teacher her name is Allison Krennic she's forty two years old so she is my age she has been charged with two counts of sexual assault. Three counts of risk to injury to a child and impairing the morals of a child. Which thing she did? How old? Was- the child was 11 year old, 11 year old boy. So this 11 year old boy vented to a family member that he was having a sexual relationship with his teacher. 11. What grade is 11? Fifth, Fifth grade. Grade. That's like that one kid, Mary Lou Letourneau. Is that her name? Mary Kay Letourneau, yeah. And they got married. Mm, that's true. But love. she was 40. And he was 14, I think. 13 okay. or 14 at the time. Well, that's still. Um, so I mean, that's just, I don't understand. I don't understand either. So in July, during the summer months, July, August of 2022, um, it's kind of when this relationship kind of sparked. So he told them that they had been communicating on iMessage and Snapchat. 
and that at least 14 times he snuck out of his house at night, the teacher would be crouching down by the bushes waiting on him. And then they would go back to her car where they would do the dirty. (laughs) What is happening? (laughs) Um, there were hundreds of messages between the both of them. Little, like, I don't understand. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't, I don't. Fifth grader. I can't. I, <laughs> they were, there were hundreds of messages between the both of them. And um, they were very, she was very inappropriate in the messages. She was obviously the aggressor in it. But she had also sent him a picture of a bracelet, which they ended up finding. And it's one of those, remember, um, it was a plastic, I guess, bracelet. I can't that you get wear. over my face. I have my look <laughs> of disgust on my face right now. Those plastic bla- bracelets that you wear that would say, like, live strong or what yeah, would Yeah, those little do? rubber bands. Yeah, rubber, rubber bands. Band and they, like, stack them on there uh-huh. and all the boys wear them. Well, she gave him one that had BFFLWB. The bitch is trying to get caught. Like, what is she doing? Best friends for life with benefits. This is you weird. Get- <laughs> Did she make it? <laughs> you wouldn't give that to another, uh, like, no! somebody your age. Let what alone- kind of mental illness does this bitch have? I'm pissed. <laughs> no, we don't want her to have shit because she needs maximum time. Well, she obviously has a mental illness if she is doing this weird stuff does she even have i mean i guess she's not married and doesn't have kids or anything because pervertism is in a mental illness like if that's the case every damn pedophile would not be in jail they'd be in an institution because they'd have an excuse to get out of it i'm sure there's something wrong with them but there's no diagnosis i guess besides pedophilia yeah pervert so they arrested her finally like just um, Tuesday the 14th so this had been going on for a while and it was investigated um, and she, to explain the text messages she was like I'm just a very nice person sometimes my nice messages can get miscommunicated I can see how um, y'all can see this as sexual but it's really not sexual I was offering support because he was dealing with some family issues Turned it back on the family. Oh, so she's a psychopath, and she's manipulative, and she's... Oh, and they know how to find their victims. So they do target the ones who, like, yeah. are dealing yeah. with family issues and stress, uh-huh. and they want an adult to yeah. trust because they're pissed at the adults in their life. Um, so she had to turn herself in Tuesday the 14th to the police, and she's now in jail on a $500,000 bond. So they're taking it serious, at least there. She, bitch ain't gonna get out. She's a teacher. Five hundred thousand dollar bond, but an eleven year old. I mean, it, I'm not excusing it, but I understand more like high school. I agree. You know, I, like yes. when you, I agree. Especially I, these coaches that j- graduate and they're just yeah, fresh like out of college. Yes, I remember when I subbed and I was like, I felt like I was just still like young, like you know, I'm, I'm I was like 35 probably. Well, how old was I? No, I that bitch, you were too old. To I know, feel like but they were young. but <laughs> you I think that was when I was subbing. When I was, uh, when I did stuff in wet. I don't know, but I was no, 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 no. It was before I even did Camp Gladiator. It was before. Yeah. So I was like young. Tw- I was like early twenties, and I was like, oh my gosh, do I really need to go and be a substitute teacher? I feel like I just got out of high school, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I, yeah. But, but I get yeah. Um. So, there's that. Here's another one. Is this the episode of all the people doing things to their teachers? Because (laughs) did you see the other one that was in trial the other day? That kid? Just yesterday, I think? No. Who got mad at his Spanish teacher for giving him a bad grade? And did what? And he and another guy, like, he Snapchatted a picture of him holding the bleach bottle and <gasps> said something and then he snapchatted a picture of him holding a shovel and it's like it's about to go down and they went and beat the crap out of the teacher and killed her what yeah because she got a bad grade on a spanish test mm. is it that crucial that's ridiculous where did that happen I don't know. It just popped up on court TV yesterday. I saw something with the bleach bottle. 
Yeah, because, I mean, I posted something, but I don't. Clorox. Yeah. So what'd they do with the bleach? I guess they were, I don't even know the story. Okay. When we bring it, I'm, we're going to bring it to the next episode then. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is uh, California, and it's about the Piper family. Okay. So January 11th, 2020, Lindsay Piper reported her stepson, Roman Lopez, 11 years old, missing from their home. She had lived in this home with um, Roman's dad and seven other children, age ranges 1 through 17. So it's eight kids in the house, including Roman, who's 11 years old, the dad, and then who is Jordan Piper, and then the stepmom. Okay? So investigators come, and they search the home. But Roman wasn't found. But they also searched everywhere else, and they just had reason to believe that he had something had to happen in the home. So they went back and searched the home for a second time. And after a more extensive search, they found the remains of 11-year-old Roman Lopez in a storage bin in the basement of the home. The autopsy showed no trauma. So, like, there was no, like... He was all together. There was no bruising. There was no blood. There was no anything. But he was severely malnourished and dehydrated. And he weighed 42 pounds. Oh, gosh. As an 11-year-old boy. And his last checkup at the doctor when he was nine, he was 61 pounds. So that was that's still, I think, small. Um, but then... Losing that much weight as you get older and grow, that's not normal. And he also hadn't been to the doctor in two years, Mm. which is a red flag. Mm -hmm. So he reportedly suffered physical abuse for years. He had been restrained in his bed with zip ties, tied to his bed at night to the bedpost with zip ties. Zip ties are very popular. Clearly, as are ropes, which is what the those Utah bloggers did or whatever. Mm. Yeah. And those kids were malnourished and there was ropes and stuff. Yeah. He, w- this, these people are probably watching their They're blogs. Pro- are they from Utah? They are from Connecticut. No, California, California, mm. California. I ain't much better there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the f- there was a bunch of CPS cases out, but the family had moved so much in California that the cases were never, like, couldn't be followed up on. So there would be a CPS case. It's like they go for the families who, they don't get the ones that are the bad yeah. ones, but they get the ones who are completely innocent. innocent. And Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they would have an open CPS case, and so a CPS case worker shows up, has the initial visit, and then by the time they show back up, they're gone. Like, their house, everything is gone. They, like, get up, pack up in the in, in the middle of the night, all and they move somewhere else. All, yes, eight ten kids. of them. Was it eight, seven or eight kids? Eight kids, eight and, kids two and two parents. Yep. So they said that they moved around in California so much that it was just hard to Where the track hell are they going? Different the apartments abuse. or something? This was the house. Um, so both parents were charged with child abuse, torture, poisoning, and second degree murder. So I guess the autopsy revealed other things. Um, Lindsay had already been sentenced to 15 years to life. So this, the stepmom, uh, for second degree murder. Jordan. Oh, they had separate trials or whatever. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Jordan, which was this dad was sentenced. Um, 15 years was are currently in jail or is currently in jail right now for sex ex- exploitation of another child. So all those kids in the house, you know, Roman wasn't the only one that was abused. So it was sexually exploiting another child and he was in jail for that. And so now he's about to be sentenced to, for the murder of second degree murder of Roman Lopez. I know you said this in the beginning. Uh, were they were the kids all theirs, or you said that one of was a step parent? I, I didn't clarify. So I know the mama was the stepmom of Roman. Oh, but okay. we don't know. But I don't know because it's all the kids. I don't know if it was combined kids, right? 
Which I would assume. Yeah. Um, well, uh, and why was it just him? I mean, I'm sure he I'm was assu- the one that's dead, right? But there's other the others were counts had some. Ab- so there's other counts of like poisoning and abuse and How, um, what kind of drugs torture. were these people on? Because were they what on drugs? What like drugs and stuff? They didn't say anything about drugs. They were just assholes. Yeah, because then they're like, I guess he died, and then they're like, well, I guess we need to do something. Put him in the body. Then. Let me. Let me they were just get a move. hit of my meth and put them in the, in the good year container, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Let me take the Christmas lights out and put the kid in. What? Horrible, horrible, horrible. And then, then just the last little one is it's the one year anniversary of the Idaho Four. Oh, I know. And I can't believe I that whole, was one year ago. I can. I know. It's November 13th. I don't know why. I don't ever remember dates. I have the most <laughs> random memory of things, but uh-huh. I knew. I just, I've always remembered it. And it's just so, it just, it just makes you want to give them justice so much more. Yeah. Because it's like, it kind of refreshes it, which is good, I think. I mean, it just. And at least, so the good part is. There's so many cases like this that they don't even have a suspect. It's cold. It's gone cold. And it's been two years, three years, four years and longer. So at least they have somebody. They could put a face to the murder. They're getting some answers. We were supposed to have a trial October 2nd, but he waived his right to speedy trial. So it's postponed. But I still feel like there's a little bit of peace, maybe more peace than like our WTF month where all those parents have no answers. Yeah. You know, still they don't even they don't they don't even got a picture to the person who murdered their kids. There was a lot of vigils, there are a lot of memorials mm-hmm. done this week just to kind of honor them. Um and I was just shocked to know I I know we've been obsessed with it for forever, but it just did not feel like a year. It did for me because I have been wanting the damn trial to start yeah. and but yeah, it's it is yeah. I mean, I remember when it happened and it was just like so, I mean, it went everywhere, worldwide. Yeah. Took over. Um, and so there's some statements out there from the parents and everything. But guess also on the 13th, Trent's team released next year's schedule. Guess who they're playing? Utah. Oh, Idaho. Idaho, the- University of Idaho. In Moscow. <gasps> the one that's in Moscow. Because I was like, Moscow. Where's-? You're not going There's to a Russia. There's at the end. I know. It's the whole <laughs> thing. I don't know. It's, it's Moscow. My friend from, um, or one of the teachers from the Idaho said the Vandals? Moscow. Moscow. Huh? Well, you need to correct her. Well, she's from there. Well, she's stupid. I thought she was correct to me. Nope. <laughs> she forgot. <laughs> Maybe. Watch me, watch me be getting it backwards, probably. But it's it's I I remembered it was Moscow because Moscow was what you think because Russia, right? Don't get me lying, but oh my gosh, are you going? I'm I'm going. I want to go. Are you gonna go? It's here. <laughs> oh hell! I got all excited because first I saw it and it did I'm not pissed. register. It did not register. Because what I was are like, they? University of Idaho. I mean, I know the what it looks like, but it's they're yellow and black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, we we're trying to figure out like what away games we're gonna go to. We'll go to Utah this year. And I was like, oh, Idaho. And I was like, oh, Idaho. Where's this college? And it said Moscow. Go. And I was like, oh, what? One thing I was going to say about <clears throat> Koberger and the DNA, because, you know, they're they're trying to claim that it's touch DNA that was ch- or transfer DNA. So they're they're like, OK, on the knife, the knife sheath that was left there at the scene. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's how they got to it being Koberger. Right. Yeah. But now that, you know, the defense is like, well, DNA, this DNA, IgG, this all this s- s- technical stuff. But they're they're basically saying that. That could have been somebody else's knife sheath that he touched days ago, months ago, and it just had his print on it. You know what I would say? 
I was at a garage sale and I did pick up this knife sheath and look at it, but I didn't have any use for it, so I put it back down. Yeah. How can they? Okay, so <laughs> that's this... what I that's what I think of every time somebody says touch DNA. So this came up yesterday in, when I was at the trial because mm-hmm. they were trying to say, and I could talk about this in the episode or now. Well, they were trying to say that. So. I'll just wait until I'll tell you about it tomorrow. I'll tell you about it on Thursday. <laughs> I can't you remember. Yeah. Okay. It's because it's good. It's good. Okay. All right, y'all. There's your quickie for the week. All new and a couple of we took it back to some old stories. So um, we will see y'all Thursday for a full episode. And we're going to Austin, Texas. You're going to Texas for once. We're going to I'm Texas. Excited. I'll try not to be so scattered, but because I have it all in my brain. Oh, that's that's, that's hard. never that's good. Dangerous. All right, y'all. Don't forget to stay away. Wait, wait, what? what? Where are you going? I'll see y'all in a little bit. Don't forget to <laughs> stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Bye, y'all. And don't be a pedophile teacher, teacher you weirdos. <laughs> Jesus. Uh. Hey, I'm Blair, and I'm Brittany, and we're the host of By the, the Cover, Cover Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> we cover everything from mysteries, thrillers. Romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months, and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. We are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. And you didn't say hi. I didn't. You you just kept going. I'm going to introduce the book. I'm <laughs> not reading it. It's because I don't like reading. Girls like cowboy butts, you know, and those jeans don't hide anything. Mm. Find us on Instagram at Bustles and Bangers or on RogueMediaNetwork.com. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.